Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we're about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 245. Please turn to it. Page number 245 and today is our lesson number 359. These problems that you see there on page number 245 are the exact same problems that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you're interested in watching the original solution to the problem, you will find it on day number 152. Let's take a look at it. Problem number 18 is what we are about to do. Problem 18, the first part asks us for the slope and y-intercept. Let's change the marker. This marker is no good. Slope and y-intercept of line 2y plus x is equal to 6. 2y plus x is equal to 6. So in order for us to find the slope and y-intercept, it will be easier if you write this in a standard form, the slope-intercept form. And the slope-intercept form looks like this. Y is equal to mx plus b, where m represents the slope, and here b is our y-intercept. Y-intercept is so cold because that's where the line cuts the y-axis. And the point, the point where the line cuts the y-axis, the x-coordinate is zero there. So if you substitute x zero for x here, we get m times zero plus b, which means y is equal to b. And that's your, that's your y-intercept. When x is equal to zero, y equals y equals b. When x is equal to zero, y equals b. That's the y-intercept right here. So it's or the coordinates of this particular points are 0, 0, x coordinate, and y is b. So that's what we have to do here. Somehow we have to write this thing in this form, which is very straightforward, very simple, which is to get the y by itself. So we have 2y would be equal to 6 minus x, if we subtract x from both sides, and just divide both sides by 2. That's all. And we end up with y is equal to, what we technically end up is this. What we technically end up is like this, but we can't leave it like this. It has to be in this form, mx plus b. The constant has to be by itself. So we have to write this part first. And we have to write the slope separately. So this ends up being negative 1 half x plus 3. 6 over 2 is 3 right here. There you go. And that's our slope here. The slope is negative 1 half, and the y-intercept is 3. This is the y-intercept. Just like here, b is the y-intercept, b is 3. In other words, this line goes through 0 and 3. 0 and positive 3. That's it. Which makes perfect sense, because when x is equal to 0, 2y equals 6 and y equals 3. Let's go on then, part b. We're done with this part. Let's go to part b then. In part B, oh geez. in part B, they're looking for an equation of a line. Equation of the line passing through. equation of a line passing through 3, 2 with y-intercept 1. Well, what does it mean when you say y-intercept is 1? Well, if the y-intercept is 1, it tells us that it cuts the y-axis 
when y equals 1. It cuts the y-axis, y equals 1, which means it goes through 0 and 1. It goes through 0, 1. So when it like says, with the y-intercept of 1, that is same as saying that it goes through 0 and 1. So that makes our life easy because now we know, now we know the two points that it goes through. It goes through 3, 2, and it goes through 0, 1. It goes through 0, 1. So we can use, uh, uh, we can first figure out the slope, and once we have the slope, we can use the point slope formula and get the equation. So let's first figure out the slope, shall we? The slope of this line, slope of this, this line, as always, is simply the change in y over the change in x, which is just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2, let's call this y2 here. So that's 2 minus 1. This is our y2 and x2, and this is our x1 and y1 y2, 2 minus 1, and then x2 minus x1, which is 3 minus 0, which is just 2 third. The slope is 2 third. Now that we have the slope of the line, we can use either one of these two points and use the slope intercept formula. So now we use, now we can use slope intercept formula, which looks like this y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Well, m we know is 2 third. So y minus y1, y minus y1. Let's use this one here, 0 and 1 will be easier because we have a 0 here. Always try to use the point which has a 0 in here if you have 1 because 0 makes, uh, uh, makes you do the less work. So y minus y1 which is 1 equals 2 third which is our m times x minus 0. x minus 0, which means it's just 2 thirds x. 2 thirds x. y minus 1 equals 2 thirds x, which means this implies that y equals 2 thirds x two third x, and then add 1 to both sides. So this one drops out and we end up with y equals 2 third x plus 1. There you go. That's our equation of the line. y equals 2 third x plus 1. So we add 1 to both sides and we get rid of, we get rid of this one here. y itself equals 2 third x plus 1. That's the equation of the line in the standard form in the slope intercept form which is y equals mx plus b. m is the slope which is 2 third and b is the y intercept which we were given y intercept is 1 you see. Let's move on then. Is there a part c? There is part c. Part c we're dealing with entirely new line so let's take care of that in a second. In, in part c we have a third line, a new line. Y intercept of a line with slope 3 that passes through negative 2 and 1. So the here, here we want the y intercept, which remember this is this part right here. y is equal to mx plus b. So if we can somehow come up with the equation of the line in the standard form, in the slope intercept form, then we'll have the y in, uh, we will have the value of the intercept, which is what they're asking for. This is the y intercept here. This is the y intercept, because that's where it cuts the y axis, and the place where the line cuts the y axis, the value of x is 0. So that's your y intercept right there. We know we have a point, we have a slope. Let's use the slope intercept form. Let's use the slope intercept form. 
which is simply y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Now here, the distinction of x1 and y1 as opposed to x2 and y2 is a moot point because there is no, there is no x2 and y2. We only have a coordinates of only one point, so that's our x1 and y1. There is no second point. Is there is this point? What I said just now was that here, the distinction of x1 and y1 versus x2, y2 is a moot point because there is no other point. Let's learn that. What does it mean, moot point? I'm not going to make a fuss about it right now. I'm just going to tell you which video where we can learn the word moot, and you can do it on your own if you're, interest, if you're interested in improving your vocabulary. Day number seven. Just type in vocabulary words, day seven, and you will watch the video where we will learn the meaning of the moot, moot point. So here we go. Y minus Y1, Y minus Y1, which is right here, 1, equals M, which is a slope, which we are told is 3, and X minus X1, which is negative 2. So let's continue then. So y minus y1 is just y minus y1. Here we end up with 3 times x minus a negative 2. A minus and a negative 2 becomes positive 2. And then we have to open the parenthesis. 3 times x is going to give us 3x. 3 times 2 is going to give us 6. And here we have y minus y1. Now remember, we want, we want to get the y by itself. We want to get the y by itself, which means we have to get rid of this one here. Let's add one to both sides. And we end up with y equals 2, this drops out, 3x plus 7. 3x plus 7. And they're looking for y-intercept, we just found it. The slope is 3, y is equal to mx plus b, our b is 7. Our y-intercept equals 7. What we find is that y is equal to 3x plus 7, which means the slope of this particular line, actually 3, that, that's what we, we were given that obviously, so that's not a surprise. The slope is 3 right here. So slope m is equal to 3, but we were interested in the constant, which is the b value, which comes out to be 7, and that's your y-intercept. They were asking for y-intercept of the line, the y-intercept is 7. Let's move on then, the last part, part number 4. In part 4, they're looking for x-intercept of all of these three lines that we just talked about in part a, b, and c. Let's do it. We need the room, obviously, we need to get rid of it. In part D, we need x-intercepts of, of x-intercepts of all of these three lines in part A, B, and C. X-intercepts of all of these three lines in uh, all of these three lines, three lines being the lines that we found in part A, B, and C. So let's get going. So part C is right here. Let's put this equation right here. Let's get it, take care of this right away. The equation for part C is right here, which is y is equal to 3x plus 7. 3x plus 7. And we are looking for x-intercept. x-intercept means x-intercept means the point where the line cuts where the line cuts x-axis where the line cuts x-axis the x-coordinate is 0 x-coordinate is 0 which means if you want the x-intercept oh sorry the line the, the, the point where the line cuts x-axis is where the y-coordinate is 0 where the y-coordinate is 0 right here this, this is some value right here and zero, and that's your x-intercept. We want we want the x-coordinate of this point. X-coordinate of this point is our x-intercept. In order to find the x-coordinate of that particular point, we just said y is equal to zero because the y-coordinate of that point is zero. We put zero in here and we solve for x. So y equals to zero, 
3x plus 7, which implies 3x equals to negative 7, which means x equals to negative 7 third. So that's the, that's the x-intercept of the third line. Let's do the second line over here. The equation of the second line was y is equal to one third x plus one. That was our equation of the second line. Let me just double check, make sure we did not make a boo boo. Y equals to one third x plus one, that's it. Again, we said y is equal to zero to find the x coordinate. And that will be zero equals to one third x plus one. You subtract one from both sides and we end up with one third x equals negative one. And we want the x by itself to multiply both sides by three. And we get x is equal to negative one times three, which is negative three. So that's the x-intercept of the second line. Where can we do the first line? I leave. I left no room to do the first line, did I? I left no room to take care of the first line. We're going to have to erase this part. Just give me one second. The equation of the first line the equation of the first line was y is equal to negative half x plus 3. Again, we said, we said y is equal to 0 in order to find the x coordinate. So 0 equals negative 1 half x plus 3. We subtract 3 from both sides. We subtract 3 from both sides. We end up with negative 3. You see, if we subtract 3 from both sides, the 3 drops out and we end up with negative 3 equals negative 1 half x, or negative 1 half x equals negative 3. We want the x by itself. We don't want negative 1 half x, we want x by itself. So let's multiply both sides. Let's multiply both sides by negative 2. So now we here we have a negative 2, here we have a negative 2 because 1 over negative 1 half x negative 1 half can be written as negative 1 half can be written as 1 over negative 2 this negative 1 half negative 1 over half can be written as 1 over negative 2 this negative 2 and this negative 2 is going to cancel out and we end up x by itself which is negative 3 times negative 2 which is a positive 6 that's it we're done It's important that you do these, these questions, practice as much as you can. And that's how you become comfortable. That's how you become able to do these problems in the real exam under stress when the clock is ticking. We cannot make silly mistakes. We cannot make careless mistakes. You have to learn to make yourself as much familiar with this concept as possible. And that happens through practice, obviously. I've done it again. I ended this thing with a, lecture, uh, with a sermon. Here we go. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow.